and welcome to another edition of Film Breakdowns with your man, Brandon, here from the Hawk's Nest. I thought today we would continue along the train of tackles and take a look at another one here who might be a potential target for our Seahawks, a guy who's got me very interested for a variety of couple reasons here. But when you look at this offseason, there has been a few offensive tackles that have risen up boards. You see a guy like Tevin Jenkins goes from being more of a second round guy to now kind of vaulting up into the first round as people really get into their evaluation process. A guy like Walker Little, who didn't even play last year out of Stanford, seemingly might be even a fringe first round cat this draft just because of the good tape he put out in 2019. What we've got on kind of another end of the spectrum as far as a prospect who's vaulting up a little bit, who nonetheless is a little bit different in the respect that he actually did play last year and played really well, is Brady Christensen out of BYU. When they talk about Zach Wilson, the people that knock him a little bit at times say, look at the level of competition. Okay, this is a little bit valid. They weren't playing completely a bunch of sissies, but it wasn't the highest of competition. It wasn't the ACC, BYU. But... They'll also say, oh, well, look at the offensive line that Zach Wilson had blocking for him. He was, he was clean, play, thrown from clean pockets constantly, never under any duress, never under any pressure, really, uh, unless he just held onto the ball too long. And one of the reasons that he was under this clean pocket and without any pressure was Brady Christensen. This kid is a real solid player. Uh, and what really jumped him up now into the next level as people start to really dive in on his tape and look at him is his, he just had a, one of the more amazing pro days that you'll ever see out there. His testing numbers, if he was at the combine, he would be top three in broad jump and short shuttle and 40 time and his bench press reps were there at like 30 reps. He stacked up a bunch of those drills together where he really put himself in elite territory with his testing numbers. He has been called by some as an ideal, perfect fit for an outside zone scheme. He would just be uh, marvelous in that type of scheme. I, I'm going to be interested to see if that's the case. If he's got that kind of movability, of course, it backs up what his pro day is telling us. And then you combo this as well as him having the, one of the lowest percentages allowed um, since 2014 in college football as far as his pass rush percentage. Uh, those who win against him, it was at 0.8%. Not 8%, 0.8%. So he's got a, a lot of markers here that look pretty good right out the gate with him before you even look at the film on the guy. And he would be very interesting from my standpoint from Seattle because you're looking at a guy who, hey, if you have a guy who can fit into Waldron's outside zone stuff pretty well, maybe, maybe. Okay, so we've got Brady Christensen here. Uh, and he, of course, is going to be another one of our left tackles here on the edge, this side. So we'll keep an eye on him. Should be some fun tape to watch here with Zach Wilson slinging the rock around. You've got the BYU going up against Houston this game, uh, who has brought some uh, NFL players up to the uh, up at the NFL level here recently. So a decent enough challenge. Good job blocking out on the first play. Ooh, and they got to go down deep. Corner just doesn't have much ball skills. We got here play two. All right, nice. Center moves pretty good, doesn't he? Comes out with authority off that line. A little cut block, which does not work. kind of baiting with that left hand a little bit. I wonder if he does that as a, a way to get the, the defender to commit with his hands so that then he can just take it away and then reset. Nice job. No problem there. Kind of locks him right in. Back shoulder throw. Kind of odd on that. I mean, he's pushed back a little bit off line of scrimmage. A guy that's got to be a lot smaller a player than him. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in. Another another cut. That one's a better cut block there. Don't do much blocking anymore. Cut blocking in the NFL level. They've pretty much legislated it out almost for the most part. There's still a little bit of it, but. It's one of the reasons Tom Cable's system has failed now more often than not here as we've gone forward is just uh, can't do it as much. Right, so he's 
kind of moving in space. I'm not sure what he was doing on that play. Well, he ended up blocking two guys. <laughs> so you got the start of this play where, you know, he he starts out without really any plan of action here, it seems like. He comes off the ball and just starts burying to the right and ends up blocking nobody and then comes back. So he's, not this play, but the next one. Nice job there. Got his hands on, but this play here, you see 64 here, just kind of out here in no man's land. Then he comes back around and ends up blocking these two guys. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. Little, little bit with, like, he's he's not neutralizing power in the least. He, he's just sort of taking the contact and riding it back. There he completely misses. Yikes. And his man gets sacked on the back of that. Uh, that's not good, folks at home. That is not good. Let's take a look at this again. Just again, they're, the, the, they're trying. Oh, he gets it countered inside. We saw that with James Hudson. You can't get countered. Got a guy can't get overset. They get so worried about the speed. Now, this is it's weird. He gets worried about that. In this game, he's struggling with power. Guys have been coming at him with power on every snap. And then he decides on this one to worry about speed and getting himself overset. Yeah, way overset. Just a huge gap opened up on that inside lane there. I Okay. He cleans this up. A little bit better. I, I I don't doubt he's a strong guy. I wonder if he's able to turn that upper body strength into functional football strength. If there's a snap to his power when he makes contact with the guy, or if he's almost just like the whole rest of him isn't generating any force and it's all just his upper body and arms pushing in. He does okay there. A little bit of a leaner, too. You got a little bit of a leaner in pass protection. Well, that looked good. That looked a lot better off the snap. That was driving with some force on the double team. I like that. Again with the counter. It wasn't a full hold, but he definitely was towing the line to the hold to, to neutralize the counter on that one. Arms out a little too wide. Not going to get called, but he can't. He, he's in basically panic mode there instead of. That's OK there. See, that's again, I tell these guys, these counter and the inside, both of him and James Hudson. I just like trust your athleticism, guys. Trust your ability to get out there with this guy. You tested well. You, you can get them. You'll get there. This guy's going to want to above all else, either beat you with the power or try the counter. He's not going to he's not going to get you with bend and, and quickness off the snap. Down block, nice. Look at him. He's got his guy driven nine yards down the line of scrimmage on the retech. You always love to see that from him on the second level. Good job. Good job. I like how under control he is coming at the second level. We saw James Hudson last last tape and completely out of control when he gets down that second level. He'll get there fast. He just won't arrive with any accuracy on his block. Yeah, power guy. Don't worry about it. Yeah, there you go. Smarting it up now. He's starting to smarten it up. He's smarting it up. Smarting it up real good. How you smarted him real well. Uh, very good, though. Understanding now. So you're fine. They're not going to intercept. That guy should have had that intercepted all day long. He's celebrating. I'd be snapping my hands. Catch that. All right, that's up. His 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 kick step is sloppy. He He's, you know... More of a guy that's sort of sashaying a bit. And he's 6'6". He's legitimately bigger. They've got to do a little bit of a different thing than those guys at 6'4", 6 6'5". 6 Even if it's an inch longer for whatever reason, you get up to 6'6", six, six and the, the kick step just gets a little more dirtier, I guess. But uh, it doesn't make him as smooth in getting set, which is probably part of the reason why he gets so worried about the counter move to the inside. That was a little bit better. It's still a little of the just huge wide base and then choppy feet huge wide base to choppy feet uh, yeah and then 
that should have been what people are telling us is his bread and butter. If he's the best outside zone blocking tackle that they're in this draft, then that should have been. I thought he was having himself a game. That should have been a lot better block. We saw. Uh, Sure would like to be able to see him when he gets a smaller guy who's trying to test him with power to just neutralize that guy. He should be punishing these guys. It should be a how dare you 250-pound outside linebacker challenge me with power. I can get it when it's this cat, 44, who then comes at him with finesse. <laughs> but when it's a linebacker, just... Take care of it. Stays with the block. Good job. Very well done. Wow, those defenders just completely gave up. That was that was not good. He did enough there. It was not great out the gate, but he pulled it back around. He's got a little bit of the Liam to him with the recovery ability. Eichenberg. Line here, block him out. Okay. Bring him in forward. It's not bad. He's looked okay. <laughs> that guy did not have that leaping ability to pull that one off. Okay, bang, bang, get him inside. Man, five is just clean it up. A little short yardage here. What do you got? I, I don't like how much he gets pushed back off the line of scrimmage off the snap. There he just fell into space. I mean, there he's just, where is he diving to? What What is this play? What? Watch our guy. Not on this play, but the next one. Watch what he does. He just, he... He's going to just jump forward to here. Oops. Uh -huh. uh, one more time here. Watch, the, watch our to left tackle here. Oop. Now he's playing like a tight end position here, so you have to watch out far wide. But oop. Uh. Again, he's fine with that. So it's trust, trust yourself, guy. I, that's it's just you're you're fine. It's in the adult Hudson. It's, you, trust those feet you got. You're big. You're wide. You're long. It's going to take a lot for somebody to get up the field and around you and get around that arc. You'll what you'll and you'll throw them out the back door of the club. But they do it. So it's okay there. Hand placement's a little bit better as we're going through. It's not as wide as it started this game out. See them crab blocks at the start of this thing. There we go. Get those hands in short. Kind of like on contact, he does not trust himself. He goes, ah. Oh. There's the second sack of the game we've seen him give up. Now, Zach held on to this ball a little bit long. But again, you can see everything's fine. Here, 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 here. Oh. Okay, now he gets to here, and there's really no other plan of, of what he's going to do other than just kind of hold up and just hang on. Like, try to get the guy's hands off you. Do, you know, push him to the back. Get yourself in a better position here. But <coughs> guy just keeps walking him back. Uh, we've seen him struggle in this game. It's not quickness on the edge that gets him. It's, it's freaking power. Okay, out in the edge. Come on, lay that block. Good job. That's fine. It, that's that's a great block. It's kind of hard for a tackle to get that far out on the edge like that to even just touch the guy. He got him out of the way, affected the play. That's fine. Good job there, controlling the hands. Good job. Trying to work. 
going to work. All right, you got one of those undersized cats coming at you. That was a good throw by Zach to get that ball out of there so fast. That's just a quick, quick trigger by him. That play would have been in trouble if he held on that ball. Mm. Like I can know he can move and I know he's strong. I just don't see both attributes showing themselves on display on the football field. And then, see that? That would look fine. There is a little of this going on as I'm watching this and thinking about this. So just like what we saw at Liam Eikenberg, where you're in a little bit of the same conundrum. You have a left tackle that has some problem in pass protection. Historically speaking, you would try to remove him to right tackle, especially if he has power as a key attribute of his game. This guy should have power as a key attribute of his game. He's got great explosive numbers, jumped 35 inches, I think. Uh, in the vert test, um, 30 reps to 25, uh, obviously has strength, obviously has power. Uh, but where is it on display at times? That, that was just I asked for it. He shows it. That's what I'm looking for. A little more of a just you don't have to blow the guy off the line of scrimmage, but just get a, you know, a tie goes to the runner here. You know, just get him at least neutralized a bit. And uh, sometimes he's giving up too much ground, especially in the run blocking game. He's going backwards a couple of yards. Go forwards. That was fine. Found a man in open space. I, nothing real fancy there. All right, let's go to Coastal Carolina. And uh, let's see if there's a better challenge than this. Okay, we're going to try to see if we can figure out uh, how well this guy is going to do against some other good competition. Hard to find some tape out there on BYU playing anybody but Appalachian State and New Toledo. <laughs> so we've, I had to kind of dig in a little bit deeper here to uh, find the tape on him. And we're going to be looking at our left tackle again. Boise State ranked 20, 21 in coming into this game. This will give us a little bit of a a little bit of a taste of of where they're um, where he's at. I wasn't blown away by that first bit of film study that we were doing. Um, it uh, gave a couple sacks. Didn't look great in the run blocking game, um, but it also had flashes of good moments as well. So I, it wasn't completely bad tape. Now you're in this. You are in this. I'm going to show some Zach Wilson cut-ups here as we're starting off. Um, this should give you a little bit more of maybe a better, another idea. And Boise State doesn't have anybody really on their defensive line that's going to be scary. But again, this is BYU in the soft schedule they played last year, so we have to do a little bit of, of, of looking around. And I may have to go to the 2019 tape on him to, to get a good idea of where he's at. So I just don't have a good read on him necessarily. I feel uncertain he can clean up some of the, the functional stuff within the game. He's a 24 year old player at this point. Um, hard to see him doing a whole bunch more development past where he's at. Certainly he can get a little bit better, but it's not like getting a 21 year old cat who's still just coming into his own as is also in this draft. You're just getting a little bit of an older player. And um, as we've seen with a guy like LJ Collier, that usually doesn't mean that there's a high, high level of development there to be had. A little bit of movement down block, kind of just not a lot of fire and not a lot of tenacity with this guy either in his blocking. He just kind of wants to go out there and get the job done, then he's done with it. Um, he's not trying to lay a good punch in pass protection. He's just going to get his hands on you and then kind of let you walk back. Very much a finesse tackle in a lot of respects. But then 
the, you know, the power stuff's going to give him issues, I think, on the next level. That was a weird throw. I swear when it comes out of the ball, uh, arm like that with Zach, I'm like, ooh. Okay. Doesn't ask to do much here. Ow. Right on his leg. Oh, boy. Just, I mean, this is him, you know. This is him here. You watch him, and he gets down, and he just leaves his guy. And and why are you leaving the guy? You know it's a read option. You know that they might be going up the – well, maybe it's just – no, it's not. Okay, so Zach Wilson on this play, you really watch this, supposed to get this out in the bubble screen, and there's no intention of it getting there. The guy just jumps the route and freaks Zach out. So he just holds it and carries it through. It's not that one's not on Christensen. Better looking at the kick step there. The ball is out in like about three seconds. Fourth and four. But you got a team needs you to lay a block here. This guy's just not, 55's not really going to challenge him that much, and he still goes down. Goodness. Goodness. But you you, you could see there that there was, no, there was no quickness coming off the edge on him in this game, and there's no power of anybody who's challenging him in that. So it's not giving him the same. We're not seeing it. That was just a one-game-off thing, or if that's just part of his game, which is what I would imagine it kind of is. Very good throw. Romney. All right. Let's have some pass protection. Looks good. He's just not feeling challenged by 55 at all. And I, in 55, I, I see a guy that does not look like this is not a guy that's going to be an NFL prospect at all. Uh, he's just locking him out, basically dominating him. But I don't know if this is a true test either at the same point. A real initiator of contact. You can see him even here where he's just sort of waiting for the guy to get his hands into him. And it's almost like the second the guy puts his hands on him, then he'll put his hands on you. And he makes it work. But it's part of what sort of has me labeling him a little bit as a finesse left tackle. Because there, there's no real nasty here to his game. I don't, maybe there doesn't have to be in the modern age. In the modern age, these guys can be just patty cakers, and that's going to be fine because everything's going to spread formations and concepts. I don't know if that would work with Seattle's offense as much because we're so much more based, whether you like it or not, on trying to establish the run and needing a guy that's going to drive guys forward and is going to wear guys down. And if you're not tenacious, you don't lean on guys, you don't keep pushing, play to the whistle, all that stuff. I don't know how much of a fit you would really be. I like the sound of him when with his testing numbers and, and what I was hearing about prior on it, but I, I'm just not seeing a lot in his tape here of what I'm watching that's really making me like his game. Um, it's great to have those testing numbers. I'm, I'm glad he's got the 0.8% pressure rate, which you can see in like this this type of game. If we go through this game or we look at you know, Appalachian States or whatever the heck we're looking at, uh, you know, 
that's that's great against competition that's not even average college competition, which Boise State should be, but they're just not going to be layered with that many athletes across the board. And we watched Hudson play, and he's going against Aziz Oldowari. It's like, well, that's a pretty good test. Or Liam Eikenberg against Clemson. It's a good test. And you got BYU here, and it's, I think, a valid criticism to go, well, how much how much can I take away from this? He's 24 years old in this game, going against you know, the kid's probably 21. Um, another, he's got that extra year for the body to be developed like that and that strength to be developed like that, to get that bench rep up like it did. Oh, just again, this right here, it's, you know, he, he's dealing with a guy that's smaller than him. Why, why, I understand you're going to give up a little ground when you, when you initially get, okay, he's at the, you know, not this play, it's the next one. Watch how far back he gets punched on this play by the defender. Boom. I mean, he's, he almost initially walks him back into the kitchen before he finally gets a chance to set and 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 stop his momentum. And you're going to give up a little bit of momentum here, but I just, whoa, see how far it goes instantly like that. And that's a kid's not that strong, not that violent, not that sudden. What happens when he deals with a defender who's got true NFL strength? Well, what happens then? Is that's going to go back another three or four steps, and he's just going to get continually walked back into the pocket? I would be very worried about that bust factor with him as a player right now. He's got the measurables, got the size, he's got the footwork and and short area quickness to go with that size, which is incredible. But you'd like him to see him put these measurables and physical traits together on the football field a little bit more, for it to sort of come together as opposed to looking like disproportionate parts. He's fine there, but again, how much of this is just short, quick, bang, bang, I'm just going to hit you fast, quick plays where it's like he's got a block for two seconds. On these deeper drops, on these times where he's got to actually really set up. Not quite as clean. The defense just made it easy for them on that play. All right, so I got a good feel for this guy. Let's pop back over and uh, put some final thoughts together on him. I'm going to do some more look-see on him, but I think we've got a pretty good snapshot uh, of him as a player. Well, there, that's just fine. All right, so let's try one more little film view, film view here. We watched UCF before <clears throat> with um, Mr. Hudson. So I figured let's watch a little bit with Christensen here and see if he can redeem himself on a little bit of this tape. A little bit better showing than what I've seen prior. I like this. This is exactly what people have talked to us about right there, which is you get him an outside zone. That's that's outside zone. That is outside zone. So I this this I like to see. This is as encouraging as anything I've seen run blocking wise from him as of yet. Initially on that one block, then come down, get a hat on the second guy. That that's marvelous. And that's marvelous. He's driving that play and making that play happen a lot better than what we've seen. Good job. Great handoff there between the between the guard and the tackle on that. Okay, get a little blitz. Just ignores the free rusher on the edge. Okay. But, hey, they've got a numbers game. He knows Wilson's going to get his, to the ball out of his hands. Dude, how did he lose his feet there? Okay, set up, set up. Go by, nice. Just ride him out the back door. Love it. Love it. Touchdown. Good stuff. Easy down block, go tricksily, jigsily. And it works. I would have done so many more trick plays if I was the Seahawks last year with the, the vid situation and just – Team's not having the time to prepare for it, off season to prepare for any of those, any of that trickery. All right. Guy tries to just get around him, no chance. Very well done. It's been all all solid snaps for the most part off the gate here with him. Good enough. Trying to, I, I, I didn't get a great feel on that one. He looks so he's coming out. He's going to come out ahead. Here he is pulling out in space. Psh, does just enough. 
there's just enough. There you see the speed, athleticism um, to get the job done. Not an easy block to make. You see the guy still kind of gets around him with a little shimmy shake, but uh, like what I see there. This is a lot better tape, albeit that it is highlights. It is highlights. Oh, boy. Was this a tough one to try to evaluate? I still feel like I'm going to have to go back through and look at a little tape of Brady to still get a better idea about where he stands, maybe go back to a little bit more of the 2019 tape because you can see some aspects to his game that if he can build upon them could give you an upper-level starting left tackle in this league. But if those things don't develop and they remain where they are, which there's a good reason to believe when you get a little bit of an older prospect coming in, being that he is 24 years old, that those attributes don't necessarily develop with as much certainty as you can maybe apply to a guy who's 20, 21, 22. So I'm a little hesitant on him right now. I feel like I would probably rate him, rate him, rate him around somewhere in the neighborhood of um, like a fifth round pick, but he's probably going to be taken up even as high as the third round, maybe even higher because the NFL values those testing numbers so much and they're going to fall back on the aspect that he didn't have very many pressures that he gave up. But I don't know how his pressure rate's only at 0.8%. He gave up two sacks in the first game we watched alone. It looked like there was a couple other times he was giving up pressures. He doesn't look super comfortable back there in pass protection. His kick step is kind of non-existent. It's more of a shuffle side to side, which you see in sometimes guys at 6'8", 6'6", six, 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 even 9-ish. Like we, got in this, we got another guy, a prospect in this draft who's at that height. But when you're at 6'6", six, six, it sort of looks like he's a, I, I say, you sometimes see a bigger guy who looks like he's moving like a much smaller guy. This is like a bigger guy who's moving like a much bigger guy. <laughs> and then, in not a good way. So I don't know, again, how he's going to do in handling that. Didn't struggle as far as any of the quickness speed guys. Didn't struggle with any of the bend stuff. But the power stuff just gave him real big problems. Came right up into him and just start walking him back, and you're going to be able to walk him back. And I feel like you put an elite prospect out there with elite strength and had him challenged. I think it would look even, even worse. You know, Take a couple of the elite rushers from this draft and put them out across from him, especially some of those power guys like a Jordan Phillips. I think he might eat this guy's lunch every day of the week. <laughs> he might be stealing it. Uh, I can't say it with certainty yet. I've got to look at a little bit more tape with him. This is the part that doesn't help, though, with BYU and playing such a cupcake schedule. Certainly not doing your prospects any favors in that respect outside of Zach Wilson because it's just so hard to make a metric on who this guy is and what he's going to be at the next level. Still, there are some good traits to be had here. I do think he will fit well in an outside zone scheme. You get this guy doing some of that pull stuff for the left tackle out, out ahead of things. That could be very exciting on like a pitch play to Rashad Penny. Man, he would he would be able to do all that stuff we've seen Dwayne Brown do recently, right lockstep as far as what Dwayne Brown's done. What he's not going to do as well in is in pass protection, though, as Dwayne's done, especially taking on that strength. That, lo that knocks him down for me. That puts him down just a little bit. As in regards to the run game as well, I didn't see a lot of times where he's really pushing a guy off the line of scrimmage. Now, they did do a lot of just conventional running of the football. So again, this makes it hard to make an assessment on the guy. But at the end of the day, he's getting driven back in the run game a couple of different times when they were sort of under center, when they were running it more traditional, as you would see. This is, again, a little disconcerting. It's great you got 30 reps on the bench at 225, but where is it? It's great you jumped the 35-inch vertical, but where is it as far as your explosiveness here and laying your block? Because instead, it just looks like you're a little bit of an understrength guy there over at left tackle, which, as we ran into with Liam, then puts us into a problematic situation where we can't just ideally as easily slot him then over at the right tackle position, where strength, I think, is a little bit more of a necessity. So Brady Christensen... A great prospect. I wouldn't hate on getting him if we got him in the fifth round. I wouldn't be crying if we picked him in the fourth. But I might have a tear or two if he's snagged up in the set, in the third round. I think that's probably a little bit too high from him, and you'd be basing more of it on those testing numbers than actually what the game tape is telling you. My name is Brandon. Thanks for watching Film Breakdowns. Let's get on to the next.